you no doubt heard the phrase, use the right tool for the job. Well, I'm gonna show you why an ultra wide angle lens is different from the rest, and more importantly, why you need one. Indeed, there's no shortage of commentary on YouTube suggesting that a wide angle lens is unnecessary for landscape photography, but it's just really not that simple. And if you're passionate about landscape photography, stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you that using a wide angle lens will change the way that you see the world. So, what makes a wide angle lens so much different from the rest? There's one that tends to stand out. Now, it's both revered and tested for its reality distorting properties, and that's the ultra wide angle. But why? The equivalent focal length to the human eye is about 50 millimeters on a full frame camera, that's about 35 on an APS-C camera. Although a 50 millimeter lens doesn't reproduce the full angle of view what the human eye is capable of seeing, it does provide a similar angle of view and perspective. Wide angle lenses distort our perception of reality, making it far different than what we normally see. The wider the field of view, the greater the distortion. And with this in mind, I think it's reasonable to consider a wide angle lens as any lens that has a field of view that's greater than 50 millimeters on a full frame camera, that's a 35 on an APS-C. Although after a bit of research, it seems like the industry standard kind of defines wide angle as 24 to 35 millimeters on a full frame, which is 16 to 24 on an APS-C. An ultra wide angle is considered anything wider than 24 millimeters on a full frame, that's 16 on a crop pretty wide, but it's all about perspective. Most of the stunning vistas and sweeping countryside images that we enjoy so much, they're just easily captured with a wide angle lens. For example, take a look at this image. This was captured in the Arkansas Ozark, and it's one of my favorites. At 45 millimeters, this image captures the details necessary to tell the story the way I remember it on that hot, humid morning in July. But some scenes are so immeasurable that we have trouble taking it all in without constantly moving around and shifting our eyes to various focal points to grasp the scene. These immense landscapes are what the ultra wide angle lens was built to capture. However, there's simply no way to produce what the human eye is capable of seeing, especially while standing there in the moment. On the other hand, if we wanna capture these moments in an image an ultra wide angle lens is a great choice. In fact, when done correctly, the perspective of an ultra wide angle lens can produce an image that allows one to digest the entire scene at a mere glance. It's the only lens capable of capturing all the elements of a titanic scene in one exposure. And with its immense depth of field, it produces an image with remarkably sharp focus from foreground to background. As opposed to being present at the scene when viewing an ultra wide image, our minds they tend to reconstruct the scene without having to kind of back up and move forward and look up, look down in order to compensate for perspective. An ultra wide angle lens produces a way to create a multi-stitched pano in one image with a unique perspective. In this image, captured in the Red River Gorge in Eastern Kentucky, it just wouldn't have been possible to make this image with any other lens. I used every bit of 14 millimeters to draw attention to the tree on the left and the deadfall at the bottom. An ultra wide angle lens made it possible to slant the perspective of the arch the way I remember seeing it as I moved about the scene on that cold December morning. I know many of you might be thinking about a pano, but a pano wouldn't have been able to provide the necessary emphasis on the foreground. In other words, I wouldn't have been able to reconstruct the scene in print as I saw it in the mind's eye. But so what? Why not just shoot panos and forego the expense of an additional lens? And that's a good question. And indeed, there are several comparisons between wide angle lenses and panos on YouTube, but that's simply a comparison of apples and oranges in my opinion. They're just not the same. And you can make a pano with a wide angle lens, but I think a focal length of around 50 and 60 millimeters yields better results for panos. A wide angle lens tends to exaggerate the foreground while making the background just appear much smaller. 50 to 60 millimeters produces results that are much closer to what the human eye's perspective is. Nevertheless, we wanna use the right tool for the job. A wide angle, especially an ultra wide angle, is used to accentuate certain elements of a scene, such as a subject in the foreground or an ominous sky that, that demands attention. An ultra wide angle lens is, is a tool to be used to emphasize and draw attention to a particular area of the composition. Like the wide angle, a pano is a tool. And one may use a pano to cover a vast landscape while maintaining subtle perspective that's more consistent with the human eye. Perhaps an extremely large wall print's necessary. When stitched together, a pano contains many megapixels and offers massive print quality, even with enormously large prints. Selecting the right tool for a specific job is the benchmark of a great photographer.
Again, it comes back to using the right tool for the job. I think it's wrong to compare wide-angle lenses against panoramic images. In my opinion, each have their use, and it's simply not a fair comparison. If you're new to ultra-wide-angle lenses, the real question one should ask is, how do I use an ultra-wide-angle lens? Before we get into that, keep in mind, let your composition choose the lens. You're more likely to come away with a great image by focusing on the composition and not the lens. In other words, don't try to find a use for the lens, but rather use the lens when it fits, although there's nothing wrong with experimenting with a new lens. Indeed, that's how we learn. When it comes to ultra-wide-angle lenses, though, it's important to evaluate the scene and recognize where it'll be most beneficial such as a dominating element in the foreground or, or something you want to emphasize or draw the viewer's attention to. Take a look at this image, captured in the Arkansas Ozark. These pedestal rocks are an amazing sight. In fact, it's hard to believe this rock is still standing. Although it may appear simple to just snap the shot, I assure you that it just wasn't that easy. I experimented with different perspectives and moved around the scene quite a bit, but I always returned to the ultra-wide angle. Accentuating the foreground was an absolute must in order to do justice to this incredible scene. Indeed, with the right lens, one can make an image that truly stands a chance of coming back to life and can be seen as we saw it in the field in the mind's eye. Getting low and close can change the mood of a scene, and indeed, if used correctly, an ultra-wide-angle lens can transform the mundane into something profoundly unique. The perspective of an ultra-wide-angle lens can alter reality and allow one to see hidden aspects that would otherwise go unnoticed. When properly framed, an ultra-wide-angle lens can accentuate the desired features of a composition, while minimizing distracting elements in the background. Indeed, it changes the way we see the world. In this image from the Red River Gorge, at 15 millimeters, I was able to emphasize the foreground elements and bring depth to the forest while showcasing the massive scale of this spectacular arch. Get close, but be mindful of the background and its size relative to the foreground. Ask yourself, is it too much? Does it make sense? Again, we have to stay focused, no pun intended, but we have to use the right tool for the job. Sometimes we have to resist the urge to capture everything in the scene. But on that note, one of the best things about an ultra-wide-angle lens is its vast depth of field. However, on the other hand, it can distort perspective beyond anything that looks natural. And the more one tilts the lens relative to the subject, the greater the distortion. Of course, this can be used to one's advantage in an artistic way, but it can make elements of a scene appear completely unrealistic, especially when it comes to trees or architecture. Depending on the desired outcome, shooting wider than necessary provides a bit of breathing room for correcting distortion in post. One or two millimeters might not seem like much, but it goes a long way in post-processing. This image actually was shot a bit wider than necessary because I gave myself some room to correct perspective in post. Lightroom and Photoshop, they do have few tools for correcting distortion, but they can't fix everything. And as usual, it's best to get it right in camera. And while we're on the subject of post-processing, it's noteworthy to mention that if you're a filter user, many ultra-wides are so bulbous that they require special types of filters and, and filter holders. And these can be an added expense. And even though you may already have a filter set, it's not gonna work with these ultra-wide angle lenses. So you may end up purchasing a different size for use with just one lens. Not good. However, I use the Lee SW150 filter system. The filters are 150 by 150 millimeters or 170 millimeters for the graduated ND filter. After purchasing an adapter, though, I was able to use these same filters with other lenses. Without, and, and basically, this allowed me to have one filter set for all my lenses. But that does come at a cost, and that's the size. These are big and heavy filters, and lugging them around in the field is just a chore. And yes, I've seen the newer magnetic style filters. And yes, I'm jealous. In any case, as you can see, properly using an ultra-wide angle lens is not without challenges. Indeed, while in the field, often racing against time as the sun approaches the horizon, while keeping the lens at the right angle to compensate for distortion, one must consider compositional elements in the frame, the rule of thirds, the horizon, as well as the relationship between the foreground and the background. Honestly, it's a lot to juggle. It's no wonder why there's so many, so many videos out there on YouTube suggesting to forego the expense of a lens and just do panos. But as I mentioned earlier, they're just not the same. However, like everything else, we learn as we go. And I promise, using an ultra-wide-angle lens, there's going to be a learning curve. But that said, I'd like to think there might be a few videos on YouTube that might, could help with this learning curve. Videos like this one. Just saying. Anyway, the point is to have fun. Be creative. 
From the ordinary to the abstract, one can create unique and interesting images that are far different than other lenses are capable of capturing. And yes, that applies to panoramic images as well. Lastly, it's probably best to compare the pros and cons of each. And I'll start with the cons. The price. Yes, these lenses, they're expensive. And they're often bulbous and require extra large filter elements and attachments, which are an added expense. Plus, the distortion can be overwhelming. Also, they're more of a specialty lens and not the best option for portraits. And I'm sure there's a few more out there, but these are kind of the highlights. So let's look at some of the pros, though. An ultra-wide offers unique perspectives like no other lens is capable of providing. It also opens up a new world for creativity. And the ability to emphasize the foreground elements, just there's no other lens that can reproduce that. Also, don't forget about the massive depth of field this lens has. Of course, these pros and cons are not all inclusive, and ultimately, the decision is yours. I do hope this was helpful. I can remember years ago trying to figure out if I wanted to get into the game a wide angle or not, but looking back over some of my past images, there's just no way I would have been able to, to put these in my portfolio without an ultra wide angle lens in my bag. Of course, I still love my trusty 24 to 70, but remember, part of that focal length is still within the range of wide angle. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll get back with you straight away. Also, if you like this video, you may enjoy watching my video, If I Could Have Only One Lens, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.